Hello, my name is DJ Studios, and welcome back to Behind the Scenes. This time, we're going to be doing the voice recordings for episode 5. From this point, the bright sun above my head clouded over and it poured. The monsters in the basement were only the start of the whole saga. I feel terrible, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I look like a psychopath. Let's uh, let's continue. Much better than the Doctor's Tardis, don't you? That was terrible. Much better than the Doctor's Tardis, don't you think? That was a that a laugh. I, I don't even mean to do that. Why be so boring when you can be brilliant? <laughs> Ooh, you're a lively one, aren't you? You're a lively one, aren't you? That's not even the line. Ooh, you're a. <laughs> Oh, flip. Not forever. It's not. That was. That was rushed. That was terrible. Not forever. It's a stubborn place. Stubborn people. Gallifrey lives. You just need to know where to look. You sound exactly like one of his so-called friends. <laughs> Pathetic. <laughs> I spat everywhere. If you're gonna be so persistent, then I'm going to have to... What? I can't see that. My eyes just went. I couldn't see my own script. Preserved, not lost. They were... Eh. Preserved, not lost. They can return. I found them. They are not happy with you either, Doctor. <laughs> Breaking the rules of time is your previous... I might have had something to do with that, but, you know, no hard feelings or anything. Oh, yes! Good! Bringing both of you in, you know, might just lower my life sent. No, bringing both of you in might lower my multiple life sentences by about. Bringing both of you in might lower my. Bringing both of you in might lower my. Bringing you in might no, no, you're not going to let me do this, are you? Bringing both of you in, oh, that could make my multiple life sentences a few lifetimes shorter, and here. Here's a little cue. Uh, here's a little cue. Cue. It's supposed to say clue. Here's a little clue. Uh, no, I can't say clue. I must cut it. But just to help you, here's a little question. Well, I'm just going to stand up and act it and pretend to be. Uh, method acting. Okay. Um, what were you going from? The master. Is the same species as me? Well, we were friends, but he craved power. And he's an advocate of chaos. <laughs> this was an old trick of his. He's playing a game we have no other choice to follow. First puzzle. This person. <laughs> I can't say that. Line. <laughs> act, do you want me to actually fall? I have a rock solid floor, not even carpet. I can fall into my wardrobe. Oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> Just running into my wardrobe for method acting. You. <laughs> uh, I may decide to do kind of another role of just Will because I have a lot of recording. I have about an hour worth of recordings from him. Um, just partly messing about, partly not getting things right, um, and then having to do it again and again, and adding a few things into the script, uh, but we'll get to them when we get to it. Okay, so the first effect that I want to talk about is the effect of fading out characters and fading them back in again. So during this sequence, a lot of that happens, um, and it's a principle that I've used multiple times, but the principle's been used differently for each shot. For this particular one of the Aaron and the Master appearing, um, they were cut out individually and then I actually cut out the TARDIS individually as well so it lined up between the two shots. Probably didn't need to though. Oh, no, actually I remember why I cut out the TARDIS. It was, I cut the TARDIS out because I thought that if we changed between the two shots then the TARDIS would be different. Um, so, you know, because lighting and all that, it can all go wrong which makes all the the whole thing look wrong if you know your TARDIS changes mid shot. Um, not like the actual thing, but like the the lighting on it changes um, and everything else doesn't. So I thought I'd have to replicate and duplicate the TARDISes so they both look the same as well. Um, 
which I have to do, and then I put that light over the top so that it looks like um, they're actually moving, they're actually fading out of something. Um, because it looked partly, partly it's to get rid of my kind of shoddy work, and part of it is to make it look like they're, they're beaming. First, I didn't use a sort of hard edge, so everything was quite soft and sort of feathered and you know faded out, so it'd get kind of. It, it would look odd because the green screen won't understand that these bits were faded out so it would leave them so it took me a while to realise that and had to then go back and cut them all out again but this time, and also these were quite loosely cut out, I didn't cut them out precisely um, and I think throughout, as I used it more I think I did it less. Okay so thank you very much for watching, hopefully you did enjoy this video, if you did make sure you give it a like and subscribe if you are new. Uh, I should have a video coming out maybe this week, maybe early next week that will be my reaction to episode 4 um, which is going to be fun and I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, and I can talk about all these kind of visual effects stuff that I probably would have missed otherwise because towards the end it is like oh you've completed like s three months worth of stuff in about two weeks so I do forget um, to mention stuff and it, it allows me to do all that uh, with episode four and reacting to it live so thank you very much for watching um, and I shall see you soon goodbye